Oh, yeah. Hey, King. It's going well. All right. I think... I think we fixed the bug. Sorry, Mellow Box, you're second. Feature to hide names. You mean while playing? Uh, probably not. It's not very high priority. All right, I think uh, I'm just going to say closed in favor of this. You ever see the video made about the names? What video? I don't think so. Hey, Firepuff. Yeah, this probably won't be a very long coding stream though. I think I'm just I just have like one bug to fix. So not very long. Hopefully I think I've been saying this week, hopefully I can start streaming some ranked work. Uh Vin, it's kinda up to you. I think it's good. Here, I I could just talk through it really quick. I moved out the Maliks and I put them in the other file and now it just grabs the CSS DT address from there. Uh, and I moved out the load chat file uh, stuff and that's all in here now. And the only other thing I had to do was that, um, so this call function in it user display, it, it calls a global function, which would always call this init buffers function and the init buffers function would malloc some stuff automatically. So I added an arg to basically say whether the buffers should be init or not. And uh, I basically now instead of init it, in, now I, I pass it to not init those buffers. And instead I init the buffers. I init the buffers in the scene load. Uh, where is it? Right here. And then I just call it with the arg to not use the buffers. Hopefully that made sense. So basically in here is just all of them, everything that malics and that, uh, you know, loads the CSS file. And I use the injection you suggested, so. I think, I think we should be good. Right now I'm just looking at a PR, uh, but I'm gonna be fixing a bug in a sec. A bug with uh, direct code history. This video. What is this? I just, I just want to know. I just want to know. You know, it's a good joke, funny Smurfs, but it, it's gone on long enough. Hey. I, I think I've seen Smurfs, this. But on the other hand, this, this uh, one's a good how reference. Old is this? I feel like this was a joke. But I, I don't I, I don't I, I don't remember the contents exactly, but I think I have seen this, yeah. I mean Sam say if like the thing about it is Slippy is just open source contribution. So like anyone can come in and contribute something, but you have to kind of be 
self-motivated and find something that's actually useful to work on, which is not super easy. Something that's within your skill set and is useful, which is, you know, not necessarily an easy thing to find. We can't really handhold new devs very much because it's just we don't have a big enough team and it's a big time sink. So Vin, you said, mm. was that a, was that a skeptical? Mm? <laughs> I, I, I don't really know. So King, I've actually, some people have brought that up. Oh, okay. It was an, I'm following. Yeah. I think it's pretty safe. I think it's good and it seems to work. So it's probably fine to merge, I think. So yeah, King, people have brought it up, but I'm not too concerned about it. The reason why I'm not too concerned about it is like, as soon as you enter in the right code, it'll take priority because it sorts by recency. So as soon as you enter in the, like, the letters that would bring up that code, you'll get the correct code anyway. And the reason why I kind of like actually having the mistyped codes in there is like, imagine you mistype it, you hit start, and then you go back in. You can hit Z immediately to bring back up what you had and like maybe press B a few times so you could save so you can save a bit of time it's like a feature so i actually think it's fine as is yeah the other stuff in the doc um most of it was stuff i guess i can bring it up uh Uh, let's see. Yeah, so this is fine. I, I think I just, um, we just talked about this. This one was interesting. I, I didn't fully follow what you meant, but I did see some bugs with Japanese characters, which is what I'm actually about to fix that I didn't know about. So this was good. Um, this I'm not going to change just because of what I said. We don't really have the logic in C++ to handle this, so it kind of has to be this way for now. You have to use full width characters in the doc. If you're going to auto-generate it, you have to make sure you use full width characters. Um, and then everything, all of this is basically the same thing, I think. So, which which we fixed. I think I think this is fixed. That's what I that's what I'm merging right now. Box code, yeah, box tag, <laughs> yeah. Except you're not actually entering a tag; you're entering in uh, someone else's connect code, so they can't have box characters. You could, in theory, use it for uh, teams. So I think um, I need to. I actually should check probably to make sure that works. to the text at the top. Polling of the controller. I'm not sure what you mean. Like the poll rate? I think I think that might have been discussed. I think it'd be fine to add that as an OSD. I'm If, if it, it should be an optional OSD, if anything, I think we shouldn't force it on people. But all right, so we're in here now, um, and Yeah. 
I'll show you guys the bug in a sec. Okay, so the first thing, I'll just, just show this. You can enter and leave, in theory, as many times as you want now <laughs> without it crashing. So that was the bug we fixed earlier, um, earlier today. Before, you, if you entered the screen and you left it five times, they would crash the game. So now it seems fixed. Um... And the bug I want to fix now is, you see how we have a suggestion for test right now? If I go here and I pick like any of these characters, it just replaces it and it doesn't add it as a, even like a real character. Um, I think I might know why. So I, I need to look into that. That's the bug I'm looking to fix right now. Yeah, I mean, it's not really supposed to let you now because, like, the reason it's not actually letting you is because this, it hasn't even, this letter is not really even entered. So like it should be black, right? Like when you when you enter in like when you enter in a real letter it becomes black. Um So like when you when you pick these characters, it doesn't it's not even actually entering in the letter. It's using the old logic instead of the logic we overwrote to make it work with auto suggestions. So yeah, I think what's happening is it's, I guess the handler for entering one of these letters is different than the ha these handlers. And so it's doing the original handling code, which is not working. Yeah, that's probably correct insight. It's probably a different handler because it, it happens in like kind of a sub selection. That's a good point. Because like if I do this, that worked kind of, actually that didn't work either. Does this work? What happened? Okay, I think that works kind of. <laughs> I mean, it's weird, but it does work. So I think these screens even even just have like completely different handlers. Do these all have sub selections? I think they do. All right. Okay, let's do it. Let's get into it. <laughs> You're welcome, Insight.
Yeah, technically you you could in theory use them in teams and and it should work, except right now it won't because it's bugged, right? But technically you could use them and it should be allowed. There's no reason to not allow it, I guess. You could use it on direct codes as well. It just wouldn't connect you to anyone because nobody can have that as their connect code. Wait, how am I blue? Did I switch to blue at some point? Oh, I'm red again? What is going on? Is that a new bug? That's weird. Ah, uh, fuck. <laughs> Alright, well, I guess we got a couple bugs to fix tonight. Yeah, I know. I think this might be a new bug, though, with uh, with the changes I made to the CSS. I think maybe fixing the bug where things are initialized correctly so that you can constantly leave an exit might have caused this, but I can't know for sure. I'd have to go back to the old... Uh, But I don't remember seeing this before. I feel like I would have noticed this. All right, well, I guess I got two bugs to fix. That's fine. Okay, so what we care about right now is... Um, we want to find where this happens. So in order to do that, the easiest thing to do is first we're going to go to the function um, somewhere in here. First we're going to go, oh no, that's not it. Uh, it's got one of these, one of these is fine. This one should be fine. Okay. Yeah. Name entry think. So we're going to be in name entry think, and we're going to look for places that play success sounds. I think, I think success sound is one. I'm not a hundred percent sure. If Vin's still here, I'm sure he knows. <laughs> uh, I never keep. I can never remember off the top of my head which which sound is which. Like this place, these two lines in conjunction play sound one. And sound one is one of the menu sounds. I'm not sure which one. It's it's either back or success, probably. Yeah, I always forget them too. Whatever. Let's just let's just put I usually so the the way I do I find what I'm looking for in this function, like if I want to find where these letters are selected. If I put a breakpoint on all the sounds, it's just a very easy way for me to find the location I'm looking for. Hey, Krebs. Welcome. So yeah, so I'm breakpointing all the sounds. I think three is error. I want to say one is success, three is error, two is back or something. That's my guess. Or move or whatever. Actually, I can look for this. No, no, this is, this is, um, this is on confirm. Yeah. This is on confirm.
Okay. I got them all, I think. So now everything that I do in here that makes a sound, uh, I should get a breakpoint for. So the very f so let's hit play. One thing that I get a sound for is moving across characters. Yeah, so I I move to the left. So we don't want that one. So yeah, that's two. ID two is the this the sound you're about to hear now. Yeah, that sound is two. Um, now this okay. So here, this is when I open the. I'm gonna just have this a notepad. So open um, sub dialog for. If I got invited to summit, would I attend? Uh, I mean, obviously, I wouldn't be invited to play, but I was invited to the last one. Um, so, yeah, I'd probably go. It's not too far for me. Oh, what the fuck? Did I miss one? Oh, that's probably a different think function. I don't live in Montreal anymore. I, I went to school in Montreal, but I live in California. Oh, uh, yeah, so there's probably a separate think function for these sub dialogues. That's kind of annoying. It's probably in the same area, though. I would guess. No, it's not this. Is it this? Might be. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, I didn't grow up in Montreal. I was born in uh, I was born in Jean Uh so like more north near Chicoutimi, and I moved to Illinois when I was seven years old. So I moved to the states when I was seven. And I grew up in the States mostly. And then I went back, to, I went to Montreal for university. No, I haven't been in Nova, Nova Scotia, unfortunately. I haven't visited around Canada all that much, to be honest. I, I've been to Vancouver, um, and, like, I went to a tournament in Niagara. And I've been to Niagara Falls, but I barely count that. <laughs> uh, I went to a tournament in Niagara once, and I've been to... I went to a tournament in Ottawa, but I haven't really visited Ottawa itself very much either, so... Yeah, McGill's tuition was a lot cheaper than American schools, especially for me being from Quebec and being a Canadian citizen. So, Okay, maybe it's not this because this doesn't have a a sound function. Update graphics. All right, let's I guess let's first see if Yeah, 
Yeah, I think it's not labeled. I also just wanted to go back to uh, Canada for school. It was great. I, I love Montreal. I absolutely love Montreal. I'd love to move back. Let's put some music on. Uh, I mean, if you build all of the stuff yourself, yeah, you could you could open this in in Dolphin. I wonder if I'll have to use a memory breakpoint to find this. I was hoping I wouldn't have to, but if this is taking too long, then I might have to. Wait, this looks promising. Yeah, this looks promising. Let's try it. Me out of here. Oh, what just happened? Um, okay. Yeah, this is it. This is the think function for the sub menu. Oh, um, these dev tools? Yeah, anyone can open this in Dolphin. It's just built into Dolphin. As far as these function names, this is just like the community has built that up over the years. We've named many of the functions and symbol maps, and I think Uncle Punch is a large contributor towards that. Um, I use Uncle Punch's symbol map, actually. Like, for example, right now, now that I know what this is, right, I can click on this, I can hit rename symbol, and I can do, like, name entry, uh, sub text think or something. That's not a very good name. I, I don't know what else to call it, though. Call it sub menu think. And so see, now it's named, right? So now I can, now if I look at it, it's, I know what it does. And then I can save over my symbol map. All right, so so when I hit A, yeah, so I, I get put here. So this, This is actually like going to be slightly annoying to handle, maybe. 
Ah, should be fine, should be fine, should be fine. I just need to... I, I was hoping I wouldn't have to recopy an entire code and waste more code space, but I, I don't think I have a choice, given that this is in a different think function. So... Select submenu character. Okay. So currently... We have on enter text. So this is the this is the injection that deals with uh, when you do an A press on a English character. Actually, something I'm curious about first before we get into that is. Where the fuck? Uh, non RG. Yeah. Um Honestly, I don't really care that much that they work. It's just polish uh and bug bug fixing because it, it creates a sort of an invalid state, which I want to avoid. And it just can cause confusion in case anybody tries to go there. It's on. It's kind of unlikely, but... Uh... Oh, is King, are you still here, by the way? I, I thought somebody mentioned something about issues with pressing the delete button a bunch. Is that Was that a thing? Or was that just the same as, like, because if you hit the delete button too much it backs you out of the screen so it might crash if it was the fifth screen Oh, is that quad? Okay. Yeah, I think that might have been the same thing as uh, the other bug. He was probably on the fifth screen, and he hit it a bunch, and it tried to close out the screen, but then it crashed. That would be my guess. Okay, nice. So that's the same. B6, 6B6, 6. Okay, nice. That's also the same. So I need to handle this. This one should be easier to handle, though. Okay, let's look at that one.
All right, so right now what I'm doing, or what I'm curious about is that for some reason there's a different handler when you enter in a, one of the spaces on the on one of these screens versus when you enter in a character. And I wanna see if from here to the branch, oh God, the Mango BB from Pop, Pop Pope was a uh, early indicator. What's up, Mango? What's up, Mango Stream? Welcome, we're fixing a bug. Actually, a couple bugs. They're not, they're not the most exciting bugs, but it's still pretty interesting. Hopefully, <laughs> uh, we got one bug which I was planning on looking into, which is on the uh, code, the direct code completion screen, or the new direct code, com direct code history feature. Um, and then there's another bug where going back on the team screen is changing people's color for some reason. So I don't know what's going on with that. Good to hear, Shine Blind. Good to hear. Yeah, actually, I can't even see my viewership right now. I, I don't know that my viewer count is just locked at zero forever. Me and bug. <laughs> I have termites. Any advice? Uh, yeah. Invite me to your house. I'm a professional debugger. <laughs> All right. So what I wanted to look into was, so I took a screenshot just now, which kind of disappeared. I'm just going to do it again. I want a screenshot from here to here. And then I look at it and I want to compare it to, um, here to here and I want to see if they're different I know I know there will be some differences but I want to see what are the differences okay so this is the same this is different and that's that's a difference I expect uh, this is the same this is the same this is the same basically I mean it's branching to a different place but that doesn't matter um, this is the same this is okay cool so I think what I can do is to make this space handler easier on myself. I can just let it play the sound and then replace this instruction with a branch to the other handler, which I think will, will work just fine. And then that's a lot less code. Um, yeah. We are fixing the bug. Well, this is this is one of them, which was this space. This space entry wasn't working. It actually, I was. I'm wondering if it wasn't working on the other page too. So this was a bug I just didn't catch, because there's a bunch of these. And no, see, this one uses this handler. Why the? F <laughs> Maybe it's a different character. It's really bizarre. I not, I'm not really sure. Yeah, weird. I, I'm not. I don't really know why these spaces use different is handled at a different location than than these. Yeah, it's possible that these are different characters. I I'm not sure though. But regardless, it doesn't matter. I think um, I'm going to try something. So I'm going to try to get this line to branch to here. So I think if I just subtract So 
so I think if I do this is this might end up being a uh, four off, but we'll we shall see, I guess. Hey Mookle. Thanks for the raid. Welcome back. We're programming tonight. Well, for a bit at least. Yeah, this programmer calculator is really useful when you're doing stuff in hex. Super, super useful. Okay, so we're going to add a code. You guys ready for this? We're going to add the simplest type of code where we're going to replace this instruction. Remember this. Remember these numbers, all right? We got C6 C0. And I I'm actually going to I'm going to copy that. I'm going to copy that address, right? C6 C0. And we're going to try to turn this instruction from being a what is a load byte zero into a branch instruction. And the branch instruction is going to take us here. So we're going to, instead of having the handler do stuff here, it's going to go down to this handler and it's then it's going to execute our custom code that already exists. So I don't have to have as much custom code. Yeah, exactly. Insight. That's, that's exactly what we're going to do. Yeah, we're doing a go-to. In assembly, everything's a go-to, so here we go. Alright, so to do that, we're going to go into the Slippy code base, which is open source, by the way, if anyone wants to look at it. And we're going to make a new file in this text entry screen. And we're going to call this, uh, I don't know, handle jp space dot asm um, and I'm just gonna grab this header here which basically tells it where we want this injection to happen and we want the injection at 823c6 c0 the c6 c0 I mentioned before right and we're gonna transform this instruction from being what it was before to branch 0x4c all right, and we're going to inject this new instruction there. Now, there's a tool I made a long, a while ago, which what it takes is takes all these files that are in here and it converts them to gecko codes, which makes developing a lot faster and easier. So I just run the the program that I wrote with, and it just takes every single folder every file and now it makes gecko codes and it gives me these files which are now the new gecko codes um and we are going to put them in here to override our old ones we're going to stop this we're going to copy this address again just so we have it and we're going to play this okay now we're going to go back to that address you guys see c6 c0 it's a branch now, and it's branching to 8023C7OC, which is this instruction right here, which is exactly where we wanted to go. I can even right-click it, hit follow branch. So yeah, so now it goes here. So we did it. We just added, we just changed the code, the game's code a little bit. Oh, I don't have my uh, notice. Thank you, change name, for the two gifted subs. I appreciate that. I'm going to add my... Wait. It says I have the alert box here. Why didn't it play? I guess things are just broken right now because I can't see my... I'm, I'm using Streamlabs OBS, and I can't see my viewers, and I guess my alerts aren't working. Uh, so that kind of sucks. Anyway, okay, so we did that. That's a simple code. So that's a simple thing. And that should help our space bars, the, the Japanese page space bars. Well, that's not enough. That only fixes um, the weird space bars. I should actually, 
Um, oh, there it is. We got a note if it's very late. <laughs> then the Mukul raid comes through. Yeah, I forgot the Mango raid came through earlier. That there we go. By the way, new subs, you get this this excellent emote. Oh, you also get this one. I only have two right now. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, I'll probably add more eventually. Um, <sighs> thanks, change name. Yeah, so I'll show you guys what the, the issue with the Japanese name, the Japanese space was before. So if we, um, I think if I just comment this out, does this work or is my program going to complain that the file's empty? I feel like it's going to complain. Yeah, it complained. That's what I figured. <laughs> uh, so in order to make it not do it, I have to like, easiest way is to change the accept, the, um, extension to ASM skip or whatever, anything that isn't ASM. Actually, we'll, we'll do, we'll do a prediction on this one too. All right. So I'll show you guys the bug that I think I just fixed. All right. So I'll show you guys what I think I fixed is if I went into here now, and I went and I added a Japanese space right here. First off, the first part of it is you notice how it, the, like right here, the suggestion hasn't been cleared. Like this, this suggestion should be cleared because we, we in, entered a different first character than what is included in the suggestion. So these are still here, which is part one of the bug. Part two of the bug is if I hit B now, instead of going back one character, it'll send me back to the, the uh, character select screen like that. So what I think I just did is I fixed that bug. So let's see if you guys believe me. Do you believe or do you not believe? I guess I'll say will uh, JP space work. Yes. No. Submission period one minute. Here we go. Do you believe or do you not believe? How much do you trust me? How much do you trust me? All right, so I'm re-enabling it. I'm building. Uh, I'll build a second time just for good measure, you know. Thank you, Endroblet, for the prime. <laughs> yeah, a lot of programmers are, I feel like programmers are more likely to be doubters because they know things very rarely work the way you intend them to the first time. Very rarely. Although the believers have been pretty, pretty accurate uh, on my stream, so, you know, we're doing all right most of the time. Though doubters have definitely won sometimes, for sure. Okay, so now we're going to restart. We're going to go back to our address that we were curious about just to make sure our code is actually there, right? Our, our C6, C0. Let's just double check here. Okay, yep, so we got the branch, right? So now if I go into direct and I enter the JP space, will it clear my suggestion? It cleared the suggestion. And if I hit B, 
that's what it's supposed to do. So, uh, the Believers. Let's go, Believers. The odds were strong on Believe. <laughs> that was an easy one, though. The, there, there's going to be another one, <laughs> probably, and that one will be a bit more tricky, a bit more likely to, to doubt. Although, to be fair, you know, I'm, I'm reusing existing code, so maybe it's slightly more likely that uh, the believers will be right, but... All right, so the next thing I'm fixing is it's very, it's very similar to the JP space issue. It's just that now you see that where it's not clear. It's the same thing as before. It's not clearing the suggestion like this should be cleared. And if I hit B, it sends me back to the CSS. So we're going to try to fix that. All right, you guys saw that? Now, remember before I was looking at where uh, the handler was happening for selecting the submenu characters and I found it. So it's here. And if we go here, we're gonna actually see very similar code probably to what we were looking at before. Oh, wow. Did I? I don't remember changing this, but I guess I must have Th three, two, zero. Oh yeah, look at me. Look how smart I was 10 months ago. I made this seven. I guess I must have realized that at the time. All right, anyway, uh, that's good. So I don't have to do that part of it, which so that what, what this line does is it, uh, I guess I'll go back into the direct screen so you guys can see but and then I'll pause now okay yeah so what this line does is it does a compare of the value in register 3 which is a value that has some value in it in this case the value that's in R3 is the amount of characters you've entered so far it compares the amount of characters you've entered so far to 7 uh, and then it basically determines if like it should let you enter more characters or whatever or if like your character entry was valid if it should increase to the, the cursor to the next line and all that stuff right because once you're you're full it does you don't want it to like keep going to the right and like entering infinite characters yeah slippy has a lot of assembly in it almost all of the game changes are assembly actually all of them are assembly but slippy also has a lot of c++ code as well and and go code and javascript uh and other stuff but anyway so yeah so this is the limiter originally this line is uh it compares it to three because tags are limited to four like a length of four um but because we allow eight characters in slippy uh we had to change this line to be a compare uh, with seven instead of three and the I why I, I checked this address right this uh, C320 address here and See we have a code here. So this is a code that exists and it com it changes it to seven that code line without this code running would be uh, compare three So I've already made changes in sort of this area, but that's not the change that I care about right now the change I care about right now is probably going to be applied, I want to say here. Because if you remember, we have these screenshots from earlier. This is our other handler, right? And you'll see some of these lines line up. Load I R R0 57 here, and then store half R0 whatever here. So those, those these lines line up. And where our injection is, is right here on 72C. And it overwrites this branch. This overwrites this function call to update type name. So we're going to copy this address. Am 
Monkey Baller Riot, hopefully later. Got some bugs to fix first. Oh yeah, I, I, I just realized I got a Mango Raid, so I feel like this, this is perfect. I still have a little bit of this left. What's up, Blur? I just finished it. Yeah, there was a bug blur with uh, if you entered in a Japanese character, it was running the old logic, which was causing a invalid state in the chat thing or whatever. So I guess I guess I'll just I'll just reshow this bug for anyone who missed it earlier. If I enter in one of these characters, it what it should have done is it should have cleared my suggestion, my previous suggestion. Uh, and this letter should be black. And if I hit B, it should clear the letter. But if I hit B now, it actually exits the CSS. So that's just a bug, and I am going to fix it. And to fix it, what I'm going to do is... Um, go back to where I was, which I kind of lost my <laughs> my place at this point. Uh, but I'll, I'll get back to there easily. So yeah, so. Oh, it's here. Now what's pretty weird to me is this stuff. What is going on here? <laughs> I'm not gonna worry too much about that. I, I'm gonna hope it's not a big deal. This is where the doubting comes in, by the way, for the next prediction, because I'm going to be making some guesses. And I may guess wrong. So I'm going to guess that this logic is not too important. And if I just run it, it won't, it'll work. Or it's not too important that it won't screw up everything else I'm doing. Is it time to find more bugs? I mean, if you find more bugs, that's great. I could fix them before release. Um, I need to use the restroom though, but let's make our file first. It'll be, I guess, uh, on JP enter text dot ASM. So our function, it's going to be very similar. Actually, let's, let's do this better. So that they're sorted next to each other. Um, we're just going to copy the whole thing. And then... We're going to copy this address. So now we're going to inject the basically the same sort of handler. But we're going to inject it into a different location, into where the Japanese characters are handled. But anyway, I'll be right back. I'm going to double check this when I come back and see if it's working. Or see if I think it's going to work, and then we'll maybe test it and put up the prediction. I'll be right back.
<laughs> I wanted to keep Miso on the chair, but uh, I'm too worried that he's going to try to jump off of it. And he, he hurt his hind leg recently. And uh, we're not really sure exactly what's wrong with it. And we're, we, the vet said to like monitor him for two weeks. Uh, see if he gets better, but we're worried it might be an ACL tear, so I don't want him jumping off the chair, because, uh, because he might hurt it more. <laughs> Alright. Okay, let me take a, I'm going to take a quick look at this, so I move this this f injection, which I guess I can like quickly talk through what it does. Um, first, it checks to make sure that we're in a name entry screen that is one where you're entering in a code. So it's not like a tag name entry. If it's not, it exits. So it doesn't do anything. This just fetches some address with some data. Don't have to worry about that. Then... Uh, this increases the amount of updated characters we have, which is the thing that we use to determine like how many letters are black and how many are gray. So it, it'll increase that by one. Unless it's full, then it won't. Uh, then this calls a, a generic, uh, like a global function that we have, a static function, which asks Dolphin if, it, it tells Dolphin what was entered and it asks it if there aren't any suggestions that match the currently entered text. And it overwrites the suggestion uh, if there are, if there is a suggestion for what's been entered so far. Um, and actually, so this just, I think this just sets it up. Yeah, this just sets it up and then this sets up an arg. This actually calls it and then uh, this exits. Hopefully you guys caught all that. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking all this code because I want to do the same thing, right? I want to do the same exact logic when I enter in a, a Japanese character. But since the Japanese characters were being handled at a different spot, then this code wasn't running when a Japanese character was being entered. So that's why all the letters were gray. And that's why the suggestion didn't get cleared. Because what would happen is it would just write over the first letter and the old suggestion would stay. And it wasn't, we weren't asking Dolphin for a new suggestion, seeing if there was one and overwriting the suggestion if there wasn't. Um, so that's why like, when we entered it, only the first letter got changed. It stayed gray because we weren't updating that committed character count. And the rest of the letters didn't get cleared because we didn't check if there's a suggestion update or anything. So we want to do the same thing when we enter in a Japanese character. So that's why I copied basically all of the same code over. I was hoping I wouldn't have to do that. I was hoping I could like call it in a different way, but it, I think the easiest thing to do right now is to just copy it over. Um, there are ways around that. It's just more work and I'd have to like structure it properly and. I, I don't think it's worth it for this amount of code right now. Um, so I'm going to keep this the same. Uh, and I, I actually think this is just fine as is. I think looking at this, I th think it might just work out of the box. Uh, I don't think I need to make any changes. So, who, who thinks it'll work? Who thinks it'll work? I have it in here. Same logic as before, which increases the chance of it working for sure. But it's in a different location, so who knows? There we go. You guys have a minute to bet your shekels. Easy doubt. Oh, I love the doubters. I love I love the doubters' dreams getting crushed as they see that I know what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, 
uh, yeah, I mean, it's very possible it won't work. But uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident in this one. Pretty confident, which means the odds will probably be good. Actually, actually, we got a lot of doubters right now. A lot of doubters. You love to see it. Hey, Flinchy. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Navalis is a believer. That's what I like to see. We're about to find out if it worked. Let's make sure I overrode it with the latest. 240. That looks right. Here we go. <laughs> the believers are always right. You just can't you just can't be wrong as a believer. You just, you just can't be wrong. Always believe. Is this normal though? It does work, but do you guys know if this is normal? If you like, uh, if I select like this and I pick this, that it changes me to the other screen. I, I don't use, I don't use this enough. Who uses this screen? You think that's normal? Okay. Yeah, I just I want to make sure I haven't broken something cuz it's poss it's possible I broke something else. Cuz it looks like like if I select this one and then I select if I select this it stays on the same one, but if I select this one it switches me to the other page. But that seems like it's probably normal. I would, it kind of makes sense because you'll, you see that they're kind of like, I keep pointing at my screen. You guys can't freaking see that. I need to use my mouse. Uh, <laughs> you can see that like it has this. And then if I go to this one, it, it's, it's here. So it's normal. Okay, great. Okay. Yeah, I will. I believe, I believe chat. I believe chat and it, it makes sense to me. So. I think we're good. I think we fixed the bug. Now we got to fix the other bug. But first, let's commit our code. Always, always commit your code. Oh god, I must not have built before. Whatever. Handle... JP characters. Uh, with code history. In code history. Okay. Cool. So we fixed that bug. That's one of the bugs. The other bug is this bug, where if I enter and I go back, it changes my color. <laughs> Why the f does it do that? <laughs> it's so bizarre. I want to see if I go to... Um... If I use the current beta, build if it does that Me, 
Let's see. Yeah, it doesn't do that. Suspicious. Suspicious. Yeah, I, I'm not surprised, Geek. I think it's um. Yeah, Andrew. I think it's it's because it of the bug fix I added because this works now, right? You can. Wait. Oh, this is beta. That one. That one doesn't have the autocomplete. But I, I'm sorry. I meant in here, right? If I. But I think in fixing this, I probably broke the color thing. Yeah, I, I, I need to think of some some good things to uh, let people spend points on. I'll, I'll try to think of something. That's awesome to hear, Pizza for Pie. Bonjour. J'espère que tu vas bien. All right. Um, yeah, so this one's bizarre. And unfortunately, um, a lot of this code, I actually, I didn't write. So a lot of the team, the team color handling stuff, in fact, I, most of it, I think, was written by Rapito if not all of it. So, I'm not familiar with this code, so it's, so it'll be interesting to see. Once I've changed to green though, I'm good. I'm golden. But if I'm red, <laughs> this is so strange. And if I'm blue, All right, well, let's try to figure it out what's going on. I might, memory, I might break point to see what's going on, but first what I'm gonna do is look at the, uh, one of the functions that I modified, because I know what I changed, right? So I can look at the function that I changed and I can see if it looks like, I can, first I wanna see where the logic is that does this stuff. So I think it'll be here. Load CSS text, maybe? Maybe, 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 maybe. Reset portrait background colors. This is this looks suspicious already. I'm already suspicious. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how the color info is stored. You gotta love you gotta love comments like this one. This has to be Rapito. He's one of the one of the kinds of people that kind of just gets things working, and and he's happy with it. Um, 
Which is fine. I mean, I, th I think I, he's he's done some awesome stuff, by the way. I'm not shitting on him at all. He's great. Uh, but it's funny because you can see sort of the styles. Whereas, like, for example, if you look at Uncle Punch, Uncle Punch is far more cautious about how he writes things and he makes sure that, like, he understands. And I'm a bit closer to that, too. Maybe, maybe somewhere closer in the middle, though. Um, also, you kind of need to have uh, comments in assembly code because... Honestly, who the fuck can read this? Like, you, you can't read this and tell me you know what it's doing. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, this is Power PC Assembly. If there weren't comments, like, this would be a disaster. At least we have some like named variables and stuff, but even then, it's 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 a it's a goddamn disaster. Okay. Chatter text. This is all text stuff, so this isn't... A lot of the logic in this file, by the way, for, for... This is a huge file, and a lot of that logic is to handle everything that's going on here. So all of the transitions, showing the proper lines, making this little thing spin, and all that stuff. So a lot of the logic is uh, for that. And I, I wrote that logic, so I know what it is. Uh, which is why, like, I'm kind of skipping through a lot of this because I know that a lot of it is not related. This looks like it's chat stuff, though. So it looks like there's some chat stuff. I did not write that, um, but it all this all looks like chat stuff. This is changing text. So yeah, so like this this says like if you're probably waiting text and stuff. Oh wait, no, maybe this, this may be still be chat, actually. <laughs> Excuse me. No, this is, this is text for sure. This is the Z, Z text. It says what happens when you press Z. Um, error states. I think this is... This is logic to do word wrapping on the error. <laughs> I wrote some word wrapping logic in uh, assembly. That was great fun. I think I'm too far. I don't think it's going to be this low. not going to be in the chat stuff probably i don't if rapido put it in there i'd be very confused i'm like uh somewhat nocturnal right now i've been going to bed at like 4 a.m pretty consistently Huh, so I have no fucking idea what's going on with this bug, and I think it might not be worth me dumping time into it. Because I could just ask Rapito and he could probably figure it out. Since it's his code and he kind of knows how it works. I don't know what... I don't know how the color is stored at all. I'll do a little bit of digging, but I probably won't go too ham. Yeah, I'm in California.
Yeah, I chew buds. That's already fixed, actually. Uh, it it it'll be it'll be fixed in the next release. I kind of want to find this code line. It seems this is probably. I guess this is where the team index is stored. CSSDT team index. So I'm gonna try to find this code line, and I'm gonna put a breakpoint there, and I want to see what's going on. Yeah, let's find let's 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 put a breakpoint here and try to figure out what's going on here here. So to do that, I need to first find where this injection is and then I need to find this code line, which can actually often be a pain in the ass. So um I'm going to pause. This is the injection. Get a follow branch. And now it's just this massive blob of white assembly code so it's kind of hard to find this which is what i'm looking for so one way to find it maybe is to branch less than sometimes looking for groups of branches helps because the branches are really easy to see so this is a blt so we can scroll scroll down to when we see so here's a BLT, but I don't think this is the right one. It's not not far enough. We want BLT, and after that is like a load IR4. So let's keep scrolling. BLT. BLT stands for branch less than, by the way, which means it will take the branch if the compare register has indicated that the compare call that you called before said that a value is less than another value. <laughs> it's kind of a mouthful, but... This looks promising, right? We got BLT R4 1. Compare with R4 R4. This is an LBZ. Yeah, this, this looks right. Yeah. So I'm on this line, I think. <laughs> yeah, bacon, lettuce, tomato. If you're hungry, that's what it stands for, for sure. <laughs> so branch less than basically will just take the branch and go to where... So first of all, a branch basically tells the CPU, hey, instead of running code here, I want to run code here, somewhere else, right? It's a go-to, or like move to this instruction and if you do a bra branch less than then you'll only take that branch if the comparison that you did before indicated that what you compared was less than what you compared it to so basically it'll only take the branch if whatever number you were comparing was less than what you compared it to hey falco master 
Yes, Snuggles. It's it can get a little more complicated than that because you can do different kinds of compare instructions. You can compare two registers to each other, or you can compare a register to uh, like just a fixed value. And there's a bunch of other things you can do, but uh, those are the most more common ones. You either compare two registers together, or you compare the value in a register to a fixed value. How did I learn to code? Uh, I mean, I kind of started coding in high school where I took a like a class in high school for programming, but that was like really small stuff. And then I got a lot better at it by um, just practicing. I've mentioned this on my stream before, but uh, one of my first major things that I did that helped me get better at programming was a RuneScape script. <laughs> so if I do like SRL... Uh, Soft clay miner. Let's see. Yeah, this guy. You'll see. This was my script that I made. Gets approximately 130 soft clay per hour. That's about 400k per 10 hours. Holy shit. <laughs> this was in 2007. So this was one of the first things I did where I actually did some pretty more complicated programming reported yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah granite that'll be fixed i think i i'm assuming you mean like in training mode that'll be fixed in the next version those are good times good times writing this script The code is probably awful. I like I don't even want to look at it. Alright, anyway. That's some that's some lore for you guys. I don't want to look at it. I probably won't even understand it anymore. What I forget what programming language it was in. Uh I don't remember. I think it was like some version of Pascal or something like that. Anyway. Let's... Wait, did I add a breakpoint to where I was looking? I think I did, right? So if I, if I go here... Okay, so the breakpoint does get triggered here. So... So this line is this line. So this should load the current team index, I'm guessing. Current team index is two. I guess two is blue. I would have thought one was blue, but I guess two is blue, I'm not sure. Then we're, we're gonna add one to it. We're gonna compare it to four. Then if the value, if three is less than four, we're gonna take this branch. So if three is less than four, which it is, we're gonna take this branch. This is the BLT instruction I was talking about before, right? So we compared right here, we compared the value of R4, which is three right here, to four. And then we do a branch less than, and then if three was less than four, it'll go to, it'll skip this line basically. So you see when I, when I hit step over, it skipped this load immediate R4 one here. And now it stores the value of R4, which is now three, to the team index location. Assembly is generally considered to be incredibly difficult to program in. I mean, it is. It's it's you're basically like to give you guys context. Each of these lines can be directly translated to a 32-bit number. That means it can be directly translated to 32 zeros and ones, right? Like something. I this is obviously wrong. And I don't know if I put in 32, but like if you look at 32 zeros and ones, each of these lines can be converted to 32 zeros and ones. 
directly. If you look at other languages, that is not the case at all. Um, and what that means is that these are exactly the, this is exactly the code that the processor, the hardware, the literal CPU in the hardware will run, right? So it's the lowest level you can go. All right. Anyway, um, what the fuck is this? This seems pretty dangerous. Rapito, why? Free space on the heap. Did you allocate it? I need to ask him about this. What the fuck is going on here? This scares the shit out of me. Where's Vin? Is Vin here still? Does this scare the shit out of Vin? Wait, this isn't the heap? Yeah, this, <laughs> this, this question mark exudes confidence. <laughs> this is great. Yeah, I don't think this is the heap. I think so if this looks like an R13 offset. Which I don't understand why he's doing it like this at all actually. Like I'm Let me see something. Yeah. Like I think you could write this as just like STB R4. Like this. So I think you could replace these two lines with this one line. And this is an R13 offset. It's not the heap. That's like static memory. So that's a lot safer than writing stuff on the heap. But whatever, I'm just gonna... <laughs> it's just divide F by two, yeah. We're in hex. Where, where, this is, uh, this is hexadecimal right there. The value is seven F F F F F. Seven F F F, three Fs. Alright, anyway, I'm not going to worry about this for now. I'm going to hope that it's not a disaster. Uh, and I'm going to just going to keep, keep, keep on keeping on. Alright, so remember I was green and then I stepped one more. So remember that branch less than from before, guys? So we're going to, we're going to take R4, right? So we're loading the color in R4, the current color, which is three, which is green. We're adding one to it. Which so now we have four in R four, and we're doing that compare with. We're comparing R four to four, so we're comparing the value of R four, which is four, to the number four. That's a lot of fours, and it's probably confusing. But regardless, and then we're doing a branch less than. <laughs> I kind I I almost want to do a prediction on what you guys think will happen. Let's see how good you guys are. Are you guys good students? 
I'm, I'm doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it. All right. Will this branch be taken or not? So what I'm asking is, there's two outcomes here, right? When I hit step over, we're either gonna take this branch and end up on this instruction, 225C, or we're not gonna take the branch and we're gonna end up on 2258. Now remember, we just did a compare of the value of R4, which is four, to the value four, and we're doing a branch less than. All right? Let's see what we got here. Are you guys good students? Are we taking the branch or not? Remember, if we are taking the branch, that means we're skipping this instruction. We're going, we're taking this arrow. You see this little arrow? Taking the branch means we take the arrow and we go here. Not taking the branch means we don't take the arrow and we go to the next line. <laughs> I didn't see... I didn't see what the odds ended up being. Okay, everyone's everyone's in on no. You guys are right. We're not taking. We're we are not taking the branch. We're not. We're not taking this branch, because remember. So we're do. It would do a branch less than. So it checks to see if four is less than four. Tell me, chat. Is four less than four? The answer is no. So we don't take the branch. So we we end up here now. So now what's happening is we're loading one into R4. This is LI load immediate. So the register register R4 is gonna have the value one after this. You can see it's one now. And then we're storing that to our team index. So basically what's happening is when you hit A, when it's green, it loops back around from three to one and one is red. So that's how we get it to sort of loop back to the start. So, <laughs> good job, no, for winning almost nothing. <laughs> that was fun, though. I, en I enjoyed that exercise. Um, so, yeah, so we went from green to red. Okay, now let's try to actually see if that code runs when I hit start. Oh, oh I don't want this. Get this controller out of here. I'm using my keyboard. Okay, so I hit start, and I hit B. The code is running. Why is this code running? That's crazy. That's crazy, chat. Why the fuck is this code running? Okay, so that's our problem, right? So for some reason, this is the code that's supposed to run when you click you click the little thing to change your team color, but it runs when I leave name entry. It in fact, it just ran twice. Which is weird. Which is weird. It's not it, it shouldn't be running. Should be running when I do this. And that's the only time. That's the only time it should be running. <laughs> Roberto has been a bad one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Holy shit. What in the fuck? Huh. 
Oh, maybe it runs once to initialize, but... It's still a little awkward. I feel like it shouldn't be running, but maybe... Um, okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to figure out where it's being called from. So... BCTRL. This is the last function call. Which is this. That's fine, I don't care about that. Is this the same code? R15, R14. Oh god, why are we using these registers? Rapito, no! I'm scared. I'm scared, chat. Okay, well, I'm scared. I am very scared. It's not the heap. It's not the heap. I feel like maybe I will break everything. Don't use these registers, please. Using these registers is extremely dangerous. Vin! Where's Vin? Ah! I'm panicking again. Oh god. So you see how in my search for R14, the only person using that register is Mr. Robert over here. Except for here, which where Uncle Punch used it, but I'm pretty sure Uncle Punch made a mistake. Uh, sometimes chat has like... Here, here's the thing about program. Have you ever heard about rubber duck programming? But sometimes chat has suggested some okay things, or things that led to help. But yeah, Chad is a great rubber duck. And rubber duck programming is, is great. It helps you make sure you understand what you're doing. Yeah, you guys can quack. Please quack for me. Perfect. You guys are the best ducks. The best ducks known to man.
All right, anyway, yeah, so we're looking at R14 usage, and we have Mr. Robert using it a whole bunch. Here, I used it, but I didn't actually use it because this is a replacement code line. So this is actually the game's code. Robert. 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 Robert, 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 and Robert. <laughs> I don't mean to put him on blast, by the way. Once again, just, just so everybody knows, Rapito has done some awesome stuff. Uh, it's just, <laughs> I'm just being silly. But this, this is probably kind of dangerous to use this register. But to register down. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. So the reason why using this register is dangerous is oh my god. We use these backup and restore macros to set up our stack frame. I'm going to use some jargon, I'm sorry chat. And registers R14 to R31 are what are called non-volatile registers, which means that when you call a function, you can be confident that registers R14 to R31 will have the value in it, the same value as before you called the function. Hi, Vin. So I noticed uh, Robert's been using R14 a bunch, so I was I was kind of getting a little scared. Because R14 isn't restored by our macro. Um, but I also noticed this, which I assume is a, is a mistake. And I just want to double check. Well, the reason I'm calling him that is because that's why he shows up in the git. <laughs> yeah. You show up as Uncle Punch. But anyway, I'm assuming that this was a mistake. And I just want to confirm. This is in uh, UCF text. Yeah, it's the UCF text.asm from a month ago. I think when we added UCF.8. I'm assuming it's a mis it's just an error. It probably didn't break anything. But I I'm guessing it's supposed to be 12, right? Okay, yeah. I mean, in this case, I just want to make sure that, like, there wasn't a reason to use that. I, I was pretty sure it wasn't supposed to be that, but it's in the original. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it's safe to change. Yeah, no problem. Now, these... <sighs> 
These are gonna be a bit more annoying. Honestly, like, is there any reason we don't add R14 to R19 to the backup and restore macro? Twelve is probably enough, yeah. Yeah, I think I've made that mistake before where I accidentally used the other registers. Um and obviously yeah, we the Rapito's been using them a decent amount. I think to give people context, the issue here is that if any function, if the parent function ever intended to like wrote something to R15 and expected it, the value to remain and tried to use it later, if you use R15 like this in one of these functions, it will very likely crash the game. Uh, that was Enzyme. Enzyme modified a lot of the slippy stuff to make it support doubles. At least, uh, yeah, there was a lot of polish to add to that to his code still, but uh, that was Enzyme. I mean, doubles was kind of an expansion of the existing code, right? It's just like you look for everywhere where there's uh, one person doing something and then you make it so that there are more than one which is not super easy either right like it's a, it's a lot of work for sure um, and he definitely had to do some digging to find the right places to do that I need to take my hoodie off. I'm burning up. Hi, Misa. Say hi to the chat, Miso. Oh, come on. <sighs> Miso says bork bork. You want to sit on my lap? Where was I before I got caught up in this R14 bullshit or R15? Whoops. Yeah, I think I'm here.
init button. Switch team. Why does it call switch teams right now? I'll bring it back. Wanna stay in your bed? Alright. You just chill there. He got upset because I put him down so quickly after picking him up. <laughs> Alright. Uh jeez. Kid Malfisto. Oh, are you the guy that was in Hugs' chat talking about how you use macros? You should probably stop doing that. Here we go. Let's see here. Is this you? Band. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not. Oh, wow. I didn't notice there's a typo there. I'm not going to ban you. But we probably will be detecting macros later uh, and banning people. 
especially if they're used in ranked. So I recommend you learn to play the game instead of using macros. All right. Um, unfortunately, chess performance issues are extremely hard to debug. There could be like a bajillion reasons why it's not running well. You could try different backends, like Cayman is suggesting, but it doesn't necessarily work. It might not necessarily work, rather, but that's one thing to try. I mean... If you go to the Discord, right, we have, I think we have a performance command, which lists a bunch of stuff to try. You could try this stuff. It won't necessarily help you, but it might. Yeah, you'll need to go to the Discord for that. I got pinged. Pin, please. <laughs> I'm. S I don't understand, Vin. I just don't understand. <laughs> uh. This is the bad part about going through this code. Is that. I just like, I just want to rip so much of it out, but I just don't want to spend the time. Like, like all this R15 usage should not, probably not be using R15. There's like, so much weird stuff. Like, like, like this is just this is so confusing to me. Yeah, <laughs> we were talking about this one earlier too, Vin. <laughs> This comment is hilarious. <laughs> Store team selection on free space on heap. But it's not the heap. It does a sub I of R13 with this. Which also could just be one instruction. He's writing to an R13 offset. I, 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 when I first saw this comment, I was like, uh oh, that sounds awful. But I don't think he's right into the heap, so it's not as awful as I thought. But yeah, it's just, it's just, it's probably not worth the effort. To just like, it, sometimes if the code works, it works. You know? <laughs> It pains me a little, but it's fine. It, it it it's doing it's doing the job, and I am extremely thankful that it does the job because 
Uh, this was probably like uh, not, this was not an easy task getting the the team stuff working on that screen so yeah this is I feel like he wants he wants his old... Does he want his old R3 values? Or something? No, he doesn't even use them. Because he just overwrites them anyway, right? These faces really don't... Don't... <laughs> don't inspire confidence. Oh, wow. Thanks for the 10 gifted subs, Chess. I appreciate that. I I hope the uh I hope the stuff some of the stuff in the Discord helps you. If not, just ask for some more help in the Discord and I mean hopefully we can help, but like I said, unfortunately with performance stuff it's it's really hard. I want to think... <sighs> yeah, asking people can certainly help if, uh, if none of that stuff works. All right, so I, so... What if I just, what if I just get rid of this? So I understand why he's doing this, I think. I think he was doing this because... Um, I think he was doing this because the CSS data table was getting cleared every time. Every time you went into name entry and came back. And he wanted to restore the team that you were on before. But I actually don't think you need to do that anymore. And that's actually probably part of why the problem started to show up. What is R15 doing here, though? Are these... Are these args? Like, are, 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 is he passing these as args to this function? Does this use... No. R15 is register 15. It's one of the places where you can store data. I'm fixing a bug right now where if you go into name entry and you back out, um, it, it'll change your team. It'll change what team you're on. I don't understand. I, I don't understand what's going on here. I do understand what's going on here, kind of. I kind of understand. And I don't think we need it. You guys think this will work? 
Just get rid of it all. Get, get Just get rid of it all. I don't need any of it. All right, this one, this one, if you believe, you might be a crazy person, but we're going to do it anyway. Are there, are there any crazy people in here? I hate how the the pretty I guess like the prompt is really short. We're trying this. We're just getting rid of it all. We don't need it. We don't need it. Everyone's betting yes. You guys are crazy. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I I I I this is like it's not my code and I just commented out a bunch of stuff cuz I I, there's a chance it works, but there's also a chance that I just crash everything. If this works, that'll be pretty crazy. That'll be pretty crazy. Voted no for free channel points. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe. Again, no, that's not where I want to be. Oh god. Okay, well, it was kind of wrong to start with, but that wasn't that wasn't what we were betting on. That was not what we were betting on. What we're betting on is if I enter this and I go back, am I still red? Uh <laughs> I actually was red. That's the funny part, because when I clicked it, I turned blue. Let's try. Let's try blue. What? I was blue, but the initialization is wrong. <laughs> this is one of those weird ones where it's like it it works. But yeah, it's the initialization and the color is wrong. So, uh, so I think um, it's always hard to decide what to do in here. I have three options. <laughs> Either we say yes, because technically it did what the prompt said, I think. Although it's not clear based on the UI, so you could argue that it didn't. Or we say it didn't work because of the other opposite. Or I just cancel the vote. And I think I'm going to cancel the vote because it's... Uh... <laughs> this is just too, too much. We're going to delete it. This was a kind of works situation. It kind of works. Okay, so what I'm getting out of that, though, is that this code is important, but so the code to switch teams is important, or no, this,
I got scammed yet again. <laughs> I'm all about scamming my uh, my viewers. Okay, there's just no good answer. I can't, I couldn't I couldn't settle. I couldn't settle that vote. No one would be happy, no matter what I choose. In that situation, it's all it's funny because it's also it's so common when I'm programming where something like kind of works. <laughs> It half works. We're getting rid of this too. It just makes me want to cry every time. <laughs> Removing more code will have to make it work more. Yeah. If I delete all the code, there's certainly no bugs. I know that for a fact. Alright, we're gonna take all this shit. We're gonna take all this shit and we're gonna move it into here. do this and then we're gonna do this
This looks pretty good, I think. What do you guys think? Let's try it again. So what I did is I moved out the, the code that I think updates the sort of textures and graphics based on the team ID. And then I called those directly on init. Um, that should work, right? I think it might work. Uh, I wish... I don't think it stores the prediction names for... for predictions that I didn't complete. All right, this time. This time, the vote is going to be whether things will work perfectly. All right. Now, this time, the vote will be whether things work perfectly. That means <laughs> it's much harder to achieve, but... It's easier to say what the answer was. Oh no. I hope I hope <laughs> I hope Git history doesn't end up saying I wrote this code. <laughs> I don't want my name on this. Hello, Eco Whale. Sometimes the Git blame does lie. Yeah, I touched it last, now it's mine. I pasted it somewhere else. Means I wrote it. I don't know if Vin's still here, but you know what it probably was? Probably fucking R14 and R15 were being overwritten <laughs> when he called that function. And that's why things didn't work for him. How much you want to bet that was the goddamn problem? I'm going to test it without the backup all after this. But first, I'll test it with it. And we'll see if this works. This is what we're predicting right now. <laughs> when you use R15. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fuck. <laughs> I hate this because it works. <laughs> it works, except it didn't work on first. It doesn't work on first load. 
It does not work on first load. I guess that means... What did I say? Will the colors fully work and persist? It doesn't fully work. There's a bug remaining. It doesn't work. <laughs> Sorry. I'm sorry, believers. It was very close. Oh, it was very close. I think I know how to fix it though. I think I know how to fix it. So I think what I'm going to do to fix it is I'm going to take this and then I'm going to go to here. Then I'm gonna do like that. Ranked is coming out when it's ready. That's the... That will always be the answer. But you're welcome. It's ready when it's ready. I will be streaming some work on Ranked soon though. Very soon. Hopefully this week. Probably like Yeah, the checklist is uh, anything that's critical and needs work. That's the, that's the first check, right? And the second one is ranked. Thank you, Zyke. That's awesome, Venus. That's cool to hear. Oh, sorry, Nebby. I, I misunderstood your question. I thought you were asking what's like the what's going to be worked on next. Like, what's the roadmap or what are the priorities? Uh, we don't we don't have a public list for the for everything that's in this one, but it's basically like teams, doubles, and then uh, code history, and then some bug fixes. There will be a there will be release notes when we do the release.
<laughs> All right, so I added this thing to initialize the team color to be red at the start, which I hope will mean that when it first loads, it starts red instead of starting red and blue, weirdly. <laughs> so do you guys think this will work? Is it finally the time? Uh, Eco Whale, the plan is that's going to be like, there's going to be a one time fee to change your to a custom connect code. It'll be like 10 bucks or something. And you just pay that and you can change your connect code. And if you want to change it again, you'd have to pay 10 bucks again. All right, so now remember the last bug was this. Oh, well. It was that when I went to here, I get this weird red and blue shit. And this was the last bug I think that remained. So did I manage to fix that bug? And does everything work right? Finally. Okay, so I, I made this change. Where is it at? Right here. It looks good to me. I close this. No, I don't close this. What am I doing? I build this. Yeah, the reason I don't want to do it with the Patreon is it gets awkward. It's like, what do you do for someone that's no longer a patron? Do they keep it? It kind of would make sense to keep it. The problem is the Patreon right now charges you at the first of the month. It doesn't charge you when you first subscribe. So it gets a little awkward. So it's just easier to do a one-time fee to change the connect code. All right, here we go. You guys ready? Are we good? Did we do it? That looked good. I think we did it, team. Uh, King, yes. The answer is yes. Cool. I think um, I think that's it. <laughs> what if the controller isn't port one? Great idea. Great, great thing to check. I I like I like that thinking. Big fan. Big fan. Let's try when we're not port one. Okay, it's still red. Still seems to work as expected. So I think we're good. I think we're good. What's up, Venus? You know, the best part about all this is we got rid of an R15 as well. It's great. 
So Venus, the reason why there's no Pokemon Stadium transformations right now is actually a technical reason. It would be a lot of work. It would be a lot of work to make them work again. Um, so it's not easy to do that. Uh, as far as items, items do work. Uh, I don't know if we'd have a queue for that, but certainly we do want to make it so that uh, you, if you play with a friend or something, you can turn items on. Yeah, that's right, King. I mean, normally, actually, all stages do it because of music, but with the music changes where we made where music is just off, then uh, the only stage that does it after that is Pokemon Stadium. Uh, Dax, so right now the only things we have is um, is beta features. Like for example, people that are in the Patreon can use chat right now and can play doubles. Uh, but once this is released, then we won't have any Patreon any beta features at the time until we release more beta features, and then you know if you're a patron, you'll have access to them. Yeah, Venus, that's why music's off. Remember, though, the doubles, where we don't support doubles like matchmaking, it's just, it's kind of like direct mode where you have to find three other people. To play with. The local time is 4.12 a.m. Yeah, Uncle Punch training mode is a different uh, different project. <laughs> yeah, I'm certainly not an early bird because uh, I haven't gone to sleep yet. It's uh, it's it's about sleep time though. I'm, I'm I'm getting there. Anyway, I'm just I'm just reveling in the greatness of having removed R15. Look, it's gone. It's it's just out of there. You just gotta love it. Not only that, I also got rid of this uh this store team selection on free space on heap comment. And this code, it just feels so good. It feels so good to get rid of that. Lil likes it actually, Vin, because since quarantine, right, we're like, we're in the same office a lot of the time. Uh, and she, she likes to have her own time, right? But now we're like always kind of in each other's space. So since I've been working late a lot more, she wakes up early and then she has her like time to herself in the office and can relax and stuff without me bothering her. Cause like normally, right, she'd be at work and then we'd have time apart anyway, and that would be fine. But since since there is none of that right now, it it's been it's been kinda nice to actually have the this sort of a split schedule. Or, uh, what's the word? Not synced. Desynced. Desynced schedule. So what we're going to do now is we're going to build uh, Okay, so we're going to do We're going to commit this Which I should do Fix bug With Team color And 
feeling is it cool and then this one will just be uh Uh, yeah, King, if, if you guys want to try try to break stuff again, uh, that'd be great. Okay. So now that that's done, let's just... Um... Double check, make sure. Okay, great. It's the latest. And now we're gonna take this stuff. We're gonna put it in here. Okay, I think uh, I think I fixed the known bugs. And I think it's getting to be about my bedtime. It's 4.17 a.m. So it's about time to go to bed. Um... Yeah. Alright chat, thanks for sticking around. That was a good time. Fix some bugs. Thanks for being my rubber duckies. Always appreciated. And have a good night. Peace.